Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you the surface integral. And typically in electricity and magnetism, the surface integral involves multiplying a vector field with an integration over a surface. In other words, let's say we have a uniform vector field called A in this particular direction. We have a surface, we take a very small area element, we call that dA with a vector symbol there, which means dA is equal to, and let me show you, that dA with a vector symbol is equal to the area element, dA, multiplied times the unit vector, n, which is perpendicular to the surface at that particular location. Now notice there will be an angle between the vector field and the normal of the surface at that moment. Let's call that angle theta. Then if you want to integrate over the surface, we're going to multiply the vector field times the area element, and that's going to be a dot product, which means that this can be written as the normal vector times dA dotted with the uh, vector field. And then if we're going to then uh, work this out, we know that this is a dot product, so we get the magnitude of A times the magnitude of the unit vector, which is 1, times the cosine of the angle between them, times the small area element dA, and of course we can simplify that, getting rid of the 1, it is A cosine theta dA. That would then be the integral, and then we would have to integrate that with such limits that we cover the entire surface. If the surface is fully enclosed, like for example a sphere, then the integral symbol is written with a little circle there, that simply means that the surface is complete, fully enclosed, but the methodology will still be the same by multiplying the vector field A times the area element and then we would integrate over the entire surface. If you want to write this in rectangular coordinates, we can then say that this can be written in the form like this. Notice we have the x component of the vector field, the y component of the vector field, the z component of the vector field, times the projection of the aerial element onto the yz plane, the projection onto the xz plane, and the projection onto the xy plane. Also remember that you can find dA sub x, dA sub x, that is simply going to be equal to the direction cosine between the unit vector and the x-axis multiplied times dA. We could say that dAy can be found by taking the direction cosine between the unit vector and the y-axis times dA, and we can write that dA sub z can be written as the direction cosine between the unit vector and the z-axis multiplied times dA. And that's how we find the individual elements, area elements, which are the projections of the element here onto the xy, the xz, and the yz planes. And that's how you get the rectangular coordinates for that same integral. Now this by itself may not mean a lot to you. You look at it and go, well, what am I supposed to do now? And you're absolutely right. But that's why we have some examples waiting for you to show you how to actually implement something like this. An integral over a surface when we multiply the surface element times some vector field. So stay tuned for the next, for the next video and we'll show you how to use it.